Hi guys, Asim here from the Khandan podcast team. We are back with a new episode, but because we haven't been around for a couple of weeks, we also have an awesome giveaway we're doing uh, because Yeshraj Studios hooked us up with some Dabang 3 and Mardani 2 t-shirts. If you want to win some, drop us on social media or on email a photo of you um, while you're listening to the Khandan podcast, any episode of your choosing. Uh, make it a cool picture. Usually we're not allowed technically to send out these gifts gifts outside of the UK. But if you're a loyal listener or you send us an awesome pic, we'll definitely put in the effort and sending it to you. So um, send us a pic of you listening to Khandan Podcast. Tag it with uh, the Mardani comp or the Dabang 3 comp. Uh, more information on my social media and also on the U Podcast feed. So yeah. Hope you guys win if you want to win it. And uh, now it's time for the show. Hi, everybody. You're listening to the Khan Dan podcast by the You Podcast team, a bi weekly podcast revisiting the movies of Amir Khan, Salman Khan, and Shah Rukh Khan. Every show, we pick a random year from three decades of collectively 300 films the Khans have done and let our listeners vote which movie we should talk about. So it's entirely up to you. Pick a team, make a vote, take us down nostalgia lane, punish us, or make us reassess a movie we dismissed. We love the Khans, most of us, sometimes. And we would love for you all to be part of our Khandan, because when it comes to the Khans in Bollywood, nothing, nothing else, else really, really matters. matters. Hello, hello, hello. I missed you all. It's been too long. <laughs> I, d- I didn't miss you at all, Asim. Uh, yeah, that's, that's okay. <laughs> I missed you twice, Sujoy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Stacey, oh, how are you? I, I think this whole podcast will be Stacey trying to not get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to try and let bad Stacy out, but I don't think it'll happen. <laughs> yeah, it's like two two minutes in, and Stacy is already regretting her decisions. <laughs> now, this is very like par for the course for like people who have like proper jobs and like come on this one <laughs> that have actually something to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like they come on and then they're just like oh <laughs> so that's what I signed up for yeah I, I thought this was oh. film companion but this is a reddit thread <laughs> <laughs> this is the YouTube okay. comment section of podcast <laughs> oh my god <laughs> awesome is selling it so well <laughs> Okay, I gotta go, guys. Bye. <laughs> the shortest podcast appearance ever. <laughs> Stacy, managing editor for Body Spice. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Okay. Yeah. So, um, what are we guys? What are what are we guys doing on the episode? We are doing the Dabang songs and Rabne Banadi Jodi. You saw some movies and. It, Nobody else watched any movies <laughs> this week. <laughs> I did watch um, um, Mission Mission Mongol, or, and forgive my pronunciation. I'm going to say that now. I try, but it's terrible, so forgive me. Um, but I did watch the Mission Mongol this week, uh, earlier this week too. So I could. That's actually a really good pronunciation. Was it? Oh, good. <laughs> Stacy, one of the reason we got you on is because we want some of that YouTube reaction click on our podcast, you know, how many reaction yeah. videos people get, like they're like a million clicks and podcasting doesn't have that. So I think it's far focused to mispronounce things because that's what okay. the things are. Also, come. yeah, like the other part of it is that Asim like, has worse pronunciation than you do. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be fine. Be okay, good. Thing, we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> uh, oh, by, by the way, did you, like, okay, speaking about mispronunciation, I won't even try to spell the the guy's name, but the Vijay actor from uh, Arjun Reddy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Did you just see the interview that he dropped with uh, in his in his uh, hotel room with uh, Bharatwaj? <laughs> from Kurkana? 
why is the hotel room an important like qualifier in that sentence because if you <laughs> see it it's like it's a choice like they make <laughs> you yeah. have a special interview in sun and sand <laughs> guys i <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, you have to watch this stuff it is a car crash interview it's amazing like cuz he had that interview <laughs> <laughs> hashtag content <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he had that he had that interview with the uh, film companion 100 so we're going to be t- talking about that anyway right uh, yes, we we'll do yeah. uh, there was that big interview with the um, a uh, film companion crew and yeah, yeah, the 100 best the 100 sub- great yeah 100 yeah. greatest performances or something yeah, yeah 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 so he he like the actress parvati she made comments about you know how toxic and misogynistic arjun reddy was and what was awesome about it she did it to the face of the actor that's actually starred in this movie which you know there's always like a little bit of decor in bollywood that they don't do this kind of thing so i it, that was really cool but the social media outcry has been so triggering for vijay he had he was like bharat i i need to i need to talk to you about this because otherwise this is going to become a cancer in my body and then the rest of the 40 minutes is him trying to understand what he understands of misogyny and the guy does not get it he's like 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 i was like this like i was feeling why i think sometimes women feel when guys don't get it and they're like banging their head on the wall like how can you not see when when it's right in front of you and i was like yeah this is how i was feeling because like okay i'm older than these actors right like like i have a few like so it's kind of looking back at yourself as a man and saying man i used to be so stupid <laughs> you know <laughs> oh jeez. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm also, just... it's also a choice to have this conversation with like Bharadwaj, whom I love on yeah. like a personal level. Like I know Bharadwaj in real life and he's like a really great guy, but um also he like really doesn't get mm. the interior lives of women. Yeah. Like I've noticed that more and more in his in his reviews of late. Mm. And so <laughs> it's like it's like a real choice to have that with uh that conversation with Bharadwaj and i'm guessing that Bharadwaj at least understood what the what the debate was about unlike what it sounds you know like this vijay guy i right? don't yeah. think i don't think he does honestly um and i wish you guys had watched it because it's so it's hashtag content for sure um but it's it's like also oh, why is this movie misogynistic he asks like you know <laughs> and then like are you serious I swear, he's still on on that level he's still there like so he's like yeah oh. but everybody just loves differently yeah so it's we're not judging and stuff like that it's like oh so yeah and then varaj goes yeah but you know that scene specifically where you um call her friend a fat chick that's misogyny and he's like yeah <laughs> So this is your to your point that this is like like cuz yeah. he's like Vijay just said like yeah but Arjun loves women he loves Preeti so much and he loves his grandmother so much i just don't see it like you know so, wow it's 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 shocking how 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 blind the guy is and it's like yeah i, I just feel kind of feel, i i mean cuz i'm a guy i can feel bad for him more than i'm kind of enraged in, because i probably was that guy like 15 years ago and something like that it's 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 but, pretty bad to see but this is but this is something that you know like i've mentioned to you and sujoy and i think like you guys feel the same which is that we really can't do these interviews anymore because every single one of the actors is so stupid yeah. like, <laughs> like it's just amazing like somebody on twitter just today was talking about rani mukherjee's uh uh Mardani two interviews that she uh-huh. had with Anupama Chopra and uh-huh. she was just like and the person was just like you know like Rani is so lucky that she came up in the 90s when you didn't have social media because she has some like insane dumb bitch energy <laughs> <laughs> and i was like yeah like i haven't seen that interview but i'm sure because i've seen rani give interviews before 
Like, do you remember that uh, that round table a few years ago where, yeah. I mean, we had talked about like Vijay being like a young man and not understanding how misogyny works. But Rani, as a woman, and she was like at this round table where people were talking about the Me Too movement. And, yes, uh, yes, I remember that. Yeah. She was like, yeah, women should just learn karate and like that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh what? God. I remember yeah. that. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is just, I mean, we've just been, this is not a very good time in Indian history. Uh, and I'm going to say like India in particular, because I know things are pretty bad everywhere. But, you know, just talking about like Indian film, mm-hmm. like this is just a very bad time because um, you kind of see how mainstream cinema has dumbed down the audience oh. enough to like make them rationalize pretty much anything yeah um, and I, I mean we don't need to go into the politics of it right now because it's depressing <laughs> but um, um, you know what everybody knows what I'm talking about yeah, basically. yeah. Rani even yeah. talked about the pay parity stuff and she was like, oh, I'm only interested in roles and, you know, I'm lucky enough to be the wife of a producer or something like that. Yeah. So, I so like, seen- I, I really don't want to watch her interviews anymore because I'll just end up hating her more and not be able to sit through her movies. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. I have a lot to say about Aditya Chopra as well, which we will get to. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I can end Stacy's career. But, you know. <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, yeah, like maybe we can like get the, the episode started. <laughs> so welcome, Stacy. Welcome to the Tarzan <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I can hear Stacy sweating already from this. I'm like, like oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> this will be cool. This will be cool. Real Stacy will come out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but Stacy, have you guys uh, started um, uh, working on kind of like, uh, are you guys doing like best of 2019 or best of 2020 lists on the on the site? Right, we're thinking about it um a lot of the writers are kind of bored doing them and they didn't like a lot of the movies this year yeah so (laughs) so it's a little bit hard um so we've been i've been talking to the writers and uh i know we're going to do music um we're going to do best performances but i'm not sure we're going to do films we're still figuring out exactly what we want to do so being the in-house nerd here i want to ask you all what do you consider as the decade, 2010 to 2019 or 2011 to 2020? Ooh. 2010. 2010, yeah. yeah. 2010, 2010 to 2019? Yeah. To the yeah. end of 2019, yeah. Okay. So the list need to come out this year. That's right, and it's not yeah. going to happen, yeah. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody started. Every blogger now is stressing out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I Wait, think, before yeah. before we start we go any further like i feel like stacy like we just rushed over like <laughs> stacy's intro so uh stacy do you want to just in- introduce yourself to the kandan uh, uh audience sure. just give a little like what's up <laughs> hi i'm stacy um, i'm the editor-in-chief and writer at bollyspice.com uh i started writing about bollywood Bollywood, I can talk, in 2007. And uh, I've been writing for Bali Spice since then. And uh, I just love it. It's, it's, I love my job. I love that I get to do this every day. And uh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so Stacey's like, <laughs> yeah, like Stacey's like one of these people that like, you know, we've all known for like years and years yeah. and years. So it's like really nice to have you on the, on the podcast, Stacey. Thank, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here and to, to get to take part in this. Yeah, that's that's, and I also think Stacy is like one of the most positive people in Bollywood. So when we were discussing about getting her on Khandan, like I think we spoke what a couple of weeks ago, Stacy, or was it already a month? I have no idea of time anymore. Um, I, I was like, yeah, uh, I think a Khandan needs a bit of positivity, and maybe you need a little bit of darkness, you know. <laughs> yes, I kept saying that I'm going to have bad Stacy come out, yeah. you know, but I'd have to talk in a lower voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I can, I can be critical. I can be, you, you know. Can? Just okay. I just like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I just like I like being happy about things too, though. So, but I can be critical. So, <laughs> but 
I mean, I do feel like, because I was, uh, like, I think next week I'm going to be on the BBC talking about, like, Bollywood this year. Um, and I just feel, I've been catching up on, like, movies from the, the year. Um, and right. also with that, uh, with that film companion interview, you know. So there is, I feel there, for us content creators, if you want to use that term, there is, like, a little pressure at this time to just catch up on all the movies you missed out on. Um, and yes. I don't know, Stacey, do you feel that? Are you like trying to catch up on as many movies as you missed out or not really? Or Oh, yes, definitely. Especially because um, a lot of them don't come out because I'm in the United States. So a lot of them don't come out here. So I have to wait until they come out, you know, mm. on digital and stuff. So I'm usually behind. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'm kept, like I just watched Mission Mungle, like I said, you know, sometimes I do get screeners, but that's very rare for Bollywood movies. Um, occasionally I do. But uh, so, yeah, so I'm trying to catch up, too, and help make the list. I do stay up on the music because that's easier, of course. Mm-hmm. So, Amrita, are you catching up on anything or are you just like, I give up? I'm not, I'm not even going to bother anymore. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, no, because I this is the this is the third quarter. Like I'm busy with work and the third quarter is also like when I I mean, sorry, this is the fourth quarter. God, where's the year gone? The fourth quarter and the first quarter of the year, like that's when I'm like super busy. And also when I travel, when I have like friends and family come to visit and I just um, and also like Stacey was saying, like this year just has not been that exciting for me. Yeah. Um, So I think I might watch something on. uh, Well, I know that Dabang 3 is coming out and uh, for my for my sins, we have to watch it for (laughs) the the podcast. There's no escape. Um, (laughs) Asin is like sharpening the pitchfork for me as we speak. (laughs) But uh, this apart from that, like, I don't know, like uh, if something comes out on if I have like a few hours to myself, then maybe I'll catch up on something on streaming but i don't think i'm going out of my way to watch anything that released this year yeah i, I think sujo is the only one that kind of keeps up to date and goes to like you know chichore and stuff like that in the, in the cinema right? so, <laughs> so we don't have to <laughs> i'd like to point out that even that panipat and uh, pati patni and wo is like apparently too much even for sujoy like even he has his boundaries mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm not watching those <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? I'll, 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 like, the only the only remaining hope for Bollywood this year is the Bang Three, and that's it for the year to me. <laughs> so, uh, so Joy, I, I'm kind of going through my list, right? So, um, mm-hmm. you've seen most of them, right? So, I, I I have a few that I still need to watch. I have Chichore, I have Judgmental Hekya, um, I have Zoya Factor, um, and a few others that I'm uh, oh, Super Thirty Two. Um, cause I watched article 15 and I saw mission manga like Stacy did, which would mm-hmm. you say that I need to absolutely watch before the year is then? Well, can you read those again? So Chichore, for example, is on the list. I, um, mm-hmm. super 30 is on there. Judgmental heck. Yeah. I don't know. I'm weirdly interested in judgmental heck. Yeah. It's kind of weird. That movie it's, it's different in a way. And, um, but it, it's, also doesn't like come together by the end it 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 has interesting stuff that it's trying to do but it also is not very cohesive and the ending is definitely not satisfying uh, i haven't seen super 30 i haven't seen mission mangal i haven't seen uh, i just couldn't sit through super 30 to be honest i started it and i just no <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what else was there uh, i think chichore i don't know if you would be able to relate to it at all because it's totally made for an audience that has you know gone through the whole uh indian engineering college kind of an audience mm. it's it's catering to that and i don't think you would be able to relate to it and uh, i don't know if you would be able to sit through sushant singh and shuddha yeah yeah that's why i'm kind of like <laughs> making like a mental list of things that i still need to kind of catch up on and uh, uh-huh. yeah because houseful four is not going to be on there uh, no. Maybe Stacy, it's on your list. I don't know. Um, no, no, no. no. <laughs> so, but uh, Stacy, what did you think of Mission Mango? Um, I liked it. Uh, did you see the Imran on um, short film that he did about the same thing? No, um, I missed out on that, and I have it somewhere that, on a watch list, but I did. Yeah, I have not seen it. 
I actually, forgive me, I like that one better. Um, this one, it was very good, but it just seemed too much of a Bollywood telling of the story. Mm. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. Do you agree with me in that way? Um, um, I, I, I wish there was... Go ahead. No, I was going to say I agree with you, but I, on the flip side, I hated that movie. I could not sit... <laughs> I had a real tough really? time sitting through it. And, uh, I mean, I knew I was never going to like that movie. I knew from the start when the trailer, we've been making fun of it since, you know, (laughs) when it came out the first time. And, but I was like, I need to kind of catch up because it was a hit, right? That movie made numbers. It's like, there was some conversation that it is better than the trailer made it out to be. And I, it's a very, like, and while watching it, I was thinking about this, that I don't like biopics just generally. I don't like mm-hmm. movies about um, stuff that just happened. Um, and I also don't really like the new wave of these Jingorego his- historicals. Because in a way, there's no there's no tension in it. Because you know what's going to happen at the end anyway. And then life, right. I never feel, fits into a three-act structure. And then you force it into that three-act structure or, you know, four-act structure, however you want to do it in Bollywood. And it doesn't it doesn't really work for me at all um it, and also like it's very it's like the sci-fi is, uh, sorry the special effects are so terrible they're so tacky they're so terrible oh. they're so terrible oh it's, my goodness at the end i was like what is that yeah it, it, and, and there's like quite a bit of it like at the end there's at least yes. like 15 minutes of you know this yes. spacecraft flying through space and it looks like you know, like video games I used to play when I used to have time to play video games like 15 years ago or something like that. <laughs> it really does. It, I was like, okay, why are we going the whole 11 months? Come yeah. on, let's cut it down. Yeah. And it also yeah. has this idea about um, explaining everything through very like home economics, home science, like, oh, so yes. gasoline burns like puris and I, I can use this balan to take out, you know, um, uh, toothpaste out. And, you know, everything is like very like broken down in very simple terms. And I'm like, I get it, guys. I get like, just give me the science. I'll understand. Exactly. Like, you know, like, I don't yes. need this like, oh, uh, t- puris try at that temperature kind of thing. I, I, I understand. Maybe, uh, but again, I think our friend Pulkit on uh, on Twitter said, you know, these movies are not made for me. And I think it's true. I mean, you know, they're not made for me. I'm I'm smarter than the people it's made for, I clearly. <laughs> 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 this all comes back to me <laughs> and my ego. <laughs> um, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, and yeah, it's I, I, I also didn't really like the way, um, like the the like I was hoping that this would have like a better role for Sanakshi and a better role for Vidya and um, Nitya Menon, I think her, her name is. Um, but like for example, Topsy Van, who's who's a really good actor that's delivered really? quite a few hits and stuff like that. Yes. And, she doesn't even have an arc. Like, there's no arc no. whatsoever to her character. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what, just so what, much what, what did you like to so make it simple. still positive? <laughs> I just wish they had done more of the science. You know, I just missed, like, you all of a sudden they're talking and there's music going and there's you don't see the science. And it made it seem like they did this so simply when it was not simple at all. You know, and it, I think, like you said, they could have taken it up several notches, you know, um, and it just felt much too much. I know they wanted to put the personal stories in there, but that somehow distracted from it. But though I still enjoyed it, I didn't love it. And would I watch it? In would that be one I'd buy? Probably not. No. Um, but I did enjoy it, you know, because I, I like video. So, uh, and I like the performances. Yeah, yeah. So that, that are also the movie I watched was uh, Article Fifteen. I'll, I'll go over it quickly. I think we've covered it a bit. I think Sujo, you saw it too, right? Or did you not? Am I mistaken? Yeah, yeah, I did. I, yeah. I did watch it at did, the cinema. Yeah. Did you like it? It's hard to like because it's <laughs> you know it's it's, it's, it's such hard a to enjoy. Thing. You can't enjoy yeah. it really, right? But uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's uh, very competently made, and Ayushman is brilliant in it. Uh, yeah. So, Amrita, I think you and me, we talked about this a lot, that do you want to sit through this, right? Do you want to go through the process of something, you know, about 
yeah. rape and caste system and like her and I, I got to say I was very reticent and watching it it wasn't that bad like it, maybe I was just in a better space to watch it um it wasn't mm-hmm. as bad as I thought it would be so if that's a fear that people had uh, and people had told me that it's not that bad and I didn't listen because I didn't listen to nobody except Amrita so <laughs> now I'm referring it to Amrita <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not that bad. Um but Okay, the- that's that's a- that's good to hear but also like I feel like of late mm-hmm. because Bollywood has been making like so many like Telugu remakes and Telugu cinema we're coming back to that interview with uh uh Vij- with Vijay, Vijay. but mm-hmm. yeah, but it, Telugu cinema is just obsessed with rape. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it's just casual shorthand for so many things like plot development character development like all sorts of things um and i i'm just raped out <laughs> like i don't like i don't i don't want like a serious one yeah. i don't want like a passy action one like i don't want any of it like i just i'm done yeah yeah for but, a while at least you know like i just can't deal with it but i got to say i watching article 15 i figured out something about ayushman khurana that was kind of bubbling when i watched dream girl and that movie annoyed me that much is that mm-hmm. he he he's he doesn't have the courage in his movies to actually make the point um th- hmm. there, there's a lot of ideas that kind of are brought up but they never really actually forcefully make the point that they're trying to make so even hmm. if this was kind of about rape and it's kind of about caste structure and how ridiculous the caste structure is and how inherent it is in india at the end they're all just eating roti together and everything is kind of like fine like it's it's been solved there's no like it, there's no calling out of the people that are really in charge or the ones that are responsible that are you know making this happen and even with for example um with dream girl and also with article 15 i really don't think it calls enough into um uh, a kind of puts it, it, uh, it blames like misogyny or like the way men are with women it just kind of says oh it's more about um you know um the caste system and it's more about like uh power or something like that but it doesn't really call out what needs to be called out and i feel like going back through all of his movies it's always about like you know he kind of lifts the veil of something but it never really comes to a condition and this is also something i never liked in vicky donor back in the day the first mm. of this movie because it starts with this idea about uh, you know um f- uh, a sperm donor which was kind of shocking but at the right. end of it what what happened with that core idea that the movie started on on sperm donors mm. nothing really yeah. right and the same thing right. with uh, uh, um what was the one um dam laga ke haisha right yeah it yes, starts yes. this idea about you know overweight women or you know being married to an overweight woman but at the end what does it actually accomplish like he wins the race right and that's it like it never right. calls out society it never calls out you know the people in charge the the his neighbors or something like that there's like one rant that could be you know a Uh, uh, an arctic karian monologue but because it's done to ayushman khurana it's like been elevated to oh my god this is so deep i, I think Ay- ayushman ayushman is the common element in these movies but i i think the the, the burden or the, the blame should go to the writers who are copying out on this right yeah it's basically yeah. social justice for cowards that's what it is mm. Wow. That, but, but, but then I, I, that's bollywood <laughs> who yeah. are we kidding no i agree with both of you i see both your points like for like one that's like really smart that you could see that that thing like i i you're right like asim is right like all these movies are like he says it is social justice for cowards because it doesn't take a stand at the very end uh but also like what sujoy is saying like i don't know if these movies are meant to take a stand like i think they're written like you know like slice of life movies where these are like you know this is what society is like and then here's this very specific story and then that allows you know it it it's hedging your bets 
mm. like Asim says, you know, mm. like it's it's saying that you, on the one hand, you get the cred for saying yeah. like, you know, mm. like this is what society is like. But on the other hand, because you don't challenge anybody, you don't piss anybody off. So everybody is like, oh, like, you know, like he's made this um, he's made this brave uh, leap where he's showing things that nobody talks about, but also um, he doesn't actually call anybody out or like come up with a solution for anything. So, yeah, I feel like a patsy now, Asim. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I kind do you of think want... it's the same with, I'm sorry, with no. Akshay Kumar's movies? Like, yeah. oh, and... So Akshay is like much more evident though, because yeah. he, he literally makes movies like he's painting by numbers. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you know. But yeah, it's also like he like I feel they are political pamphlets more than anything Akshay Kumar movies, and it's it's clear. I I know the game he's playing. Like for example, like to like uh, would I rather have a skinhead debate me, or would I ha- rather have like a neo neo liberal debate me that has kind of a hidden racist bigot agenda behind it, right? At least mm-hmm. with the skinhead, you know where you're at, right? So I, that's where I put in a way Akshay movies, and I could definitely feel that that was also the p- problem with Mission Mangal that it's so nationalistic, right? And mm-hmm. honestly, it's amazing what India did. There's no taking away from it, you know. And uh, this is coming from a Pakistani who our space program is non-existent. There's no competition, <laughs> right? Um, it's right. amazing what they did. But we all, I think we all agree that it was amazing what they did. And the real story yeah. was already amazing. But making it this into, in, in a, you know, a nationalistic pamphlet, it doesn't serve cinema, it doesn't serve the movie, and it also pushes away even if you want to engage with the, with the ideas that the movie is bringing. So it, it right. ends up hurting it, I feel. And that's also the problem with Akshay movies, that they're not regarded as they might have been. I mean, I, I'm not, like, I don't think Akshay wants critical acclaim, but you know, he's made movies that are quite good, that, you know, are important, you know, like, for example, Padman, I feel. But yes, that was the movie that had the least nationalistic pamphlet behind it. Compare that to Toilet Ek Prem Kata, which came out kind of the same, you know, year, which is a right. nationalistic pamphlet. So, right. yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I do feel that, but I feel... Ayushman Khurana, and it's funny because we had that coming back to that film companion um, interview <laughs> roundtable that they had, and there was also the press conference with Panipat, and both Ranveer and Arjun Kapoor are saying, "Oh, you know, you know, I, I didn't fear going bald because you know uh, Ayushman has done bala, you know," <laughs> and it's like this is the kind of courage it takes to be an actor in Bollywood is shaving your head, which in Bala, he didn't even actually do. He was wearing a bald cap. So it, right. it just kind of illustrated the, the you know, the hypocrisy and the kind of like cosmetic nature of Bollywood. So basically what Ayushman Khurana performances and movies are, are, are for is people like Ranveer and Arjun Kapoor to be splooging on over him in film companion interviews <laughs> and tell him how courageous he is. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Stacy's reevaluating her life. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I'm good now. <laughs> but did you watch, uh, Stacy? Did you watch the film companion roundtable? Did- I started it, and it's. I could not stand it anymore with all of them just sitting there yeah. staring. And then <laughs> it was driving me nuts going to one camera and they're just sitting there staring. Yeah. And then somebody talking. And then some of the things they said, I, I think I lasted like 10 minutes. And I said, I just, this is giving me nothing. And then they, they, uh, Alia and Deepika going back and forth. And then I wanted to hear from Manoj Bajpayee, but you couldn't hear anything that he was saying because everybody else is interrupting him. And oh, so, yeah, no, I didn't last very oh, long. It, it was such a weird production choice to have yeah. the format like that, just spaced out. And uh, uh, Anupama sitting on the corner. So the, it just felt like the the conversation was not being driven to any sort of direction. Yeah. It was just uh, open-ended in all sorts of ways. And it just felt... And Ranveer kept interrupting everything. And and his theatrics were on uh, some other level. Uh, uh, weird. Oh was it was just it just felt like it never went anywhere and you never learned yeah. anything and 
it would have been really interesting if you could have gotten them all to really talk instead of whatever that was. Sorry, Anupam Chopra. <laughs> <laughs> the apologies have started. Uh, <laughs> Amrita, I had to. <laughs> Amrita, did, how long did you last? Because I lasted 25 minutes and I just want to add to the point. Uh, Stacy is glad that you turned off because whatever Manoj Pajpai had to say, it wouldn't have made you happy. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, I lasted like five minutes. Oh, five minutes. Okay. <laughs> like literally it started and forget now, like within the first five minutes, somebody said something <laughs> and I was just like, oh yeah, you know what it was? It was Anupama Chopra turning to Ranveer, Kapo- Ranveer Singh and saying, Ranveer, I think we can all agree that yours is the definitive face of this decade. <laughs> yes. I was like, Thank you. Goodbye. Good talk. <laughs> And, and well, I even when he... that Ranveer just laps it up, he's like, yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Why is not anybody talking about my performances? <laughs> That's the <reason. laughs> No, but I, the thing, I, I lasted much longer than you guys. Um, I, I think I went to... No, no, I, I watched the entire interview. Oh, I was the whole, whole thing. Oh, my God. Man, force in action. So tell us how the rest of it went. <laughs> No, 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 no. Let's not get, get in. I think we have wasted enough time on this really meaningless <laughs> interview panel. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. No, but I the, the, the thing that got me, like I switched it off, I, I think I lasted 30, 40 minutes or something like that. But I just, like, you know, like for us culturally, a Mehman Nawazi being a good host is such an important part of our identity, right? And mm-hmm. just having all of these Bollywood people and not letting the South in, uh, South Indian cinema that's there have done great job. I mean, just super deluxe, you know. I don't know anything about, like, South Indian cinema. I am completely unaware of anything. You recommended super deluxe to me, Amrita. And like I said before, yeah. I listened to Amrita. It blew my mind, <laughs> that movie. It blew my mind. And then... You have the gall to say Ayushman Khurana and a bald cap is an important. Like, how do you even compare yeah. these two things together? Like, how are you even putting it? Like, in the how are they sitting at the same sofa? Right? Uh, I was just right. getting so anxious by that dynamic. Um, yeah, that that I just couldn't. I couldn't finish it. Honestly, that was my problem. Yeah. Just them sitting there staring at each other. <laughs> 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 that was just driving me crazy. I mean, Ranveer's going crazy and his wife sitting right next to him she's just sitting there not reacting at all just yeah. staring at her cup and I'm like somebody do something yeah yeah I wasn't even that impressed with what Deepika was saying to be honest but it's like yeah. because everybody else is so bad like yeah. Deepika looks like woke queen hashtag yas queen right like it's <laughs> it's uh, yeah um, Asim I thought we had agreed that you can yes, never say that I, again I said it and I immediately regretted it so <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> backstory I guess huh? <laughs> go back to episode 23 of Handan podcast um, okay. when, when we discuss Viridi wedding right? <laughs> um, I think we can move on to our oh we wanted to talk quickly about the Dabang songs right Sujo you have yes. seen all of them because I know yes. for a fact Amrita has not seen any of them <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually just I quickly looked it up like before the podcast. <laughs> There's like two of them. I've seen two of them. Are there more? Yeah, there are like four of them yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's four. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen two. <laughs> Yeah. So, Sujoy, man, what, what are you feeling about Dabang 3 and the song? I, like, I'm totally on board with Munna Badnam. Like, he, that's the yeah. jam. That's the jam this season. Like, yeah. bha, bha is dabbing, bha is being a superman, bha is doing the belt dance, bha is wearing a, like, a, a church stained glass jacket, uh, bha is doing <laughs> everything. <laughs> I, I, I cannot resist the pie charm in this song. I also like saw that um, what is that Ajay Devgan film? Um, Tanhaji. Yeah, huh. So that one, like he does a this. I don't know why all these like jingoricals, as Asim calls them, like they always have like a Shiva song in it, and I'm just like, if Shiva was actually here today, like he'd like 
he'd hate all of you because you're <laughs> like the exact opposite of everything that like Shiva believed in and like oh, but and, anyway. and 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 uh, there is uh, the other song hur hur daban oh my god when they're playing the guitars oh my god the naga sadhus with the he- guitar it's so heavy metal it's so heavy metal it's great <laughs> it is so okay. bizarre sorry <laughs> i have to look it up Oh my uh, gosh. But I was saying that, you know, like in, uh, in that Tanhaji, in that Tanhaji, is it Tanhaji? Tanhaji. It's Tanhaji. I think it's Tanha. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to do that. <laughs> it's apparently Tanhaji, uh, but Ajay Devgan changed the name because of numerology reasons. Okay. Yeah. So what is it? It's Tanhaji. Tannaji okay yeah. so the Tannaji song like you know like um, Ajay is like trying to do like Salman steps like he's trying to do a Salman choreography and mm. i was like watching it and i was like you can't do this like weeks after the bang three like yeah. because i'd seen munna badnam and i was just like no like there's only one salman khan when it comes yeah. to choreography like this and he's still there he's still making those movies so no <laughs> in in hur hur dabang bhai is like rolling his sleeves up and that's a step and yeah. bhai is twerking by the end bhai is twerking by the end. <laughs> i was like no 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 <laughs> uh, i have to watch this you have to oh you have God. to you have to S- um... stacy which 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 song did stand out for you out of the dabang um uh yeah you can I don't like any of them. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Um I know this is going to be unpopular with you guys, but uh I feel like he's gotten so much to the top that his body doesn't move and so yeah. you know it just it looks that one step when I can't remember it might have been in Hudhud when he's like falling to the ground and then standing up and falling to the ground and then standing up and then the belt yeah. thing that you know it looks very <laughs> crouching tiger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I like the me usually when you hear a song and you like it then you see the video you like the song better. And this yeah. in these cases I didn't. But that's just, you know, me personally. <laughs> it's it's like uh, Prabhu Deva is forcing him to do all these like uh, suraiya jaan lege kya steps, you know. No, I, just... I I actually think it was uh, the song I think the one you're talking about is Yun Karke. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. it's basically doing Sari Ke Falsa, but you have instead of Shahid Kapoor, who's an excellent dancer, Salman Khan, who is Salman Khan. <laughs> so, exactly. So they, <laughs> they physically have to lift him up with wire works to make him do the steps that Shahid just automatically does, right? So it's yeah, it's, right. it's, yeah, it's a it's a painful watch, I think. <laughs> it it is, and the is that the one with Sunakshi? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, yeah, that yeah, that one was painful. Mm. I don't I don't know and I liked what isn't the um the Muno one a remake of the, a song from the first film uh Muno Badam Yeah, Munna Badam Munni Badam yeah. became Munna. Yeah, Muna. I like the first one much better than this one. Um though yeah. the choreography is interesting. It's interesting to see Prab- Prabhu Deva at the end. Yeah, um, but, but Stacy but... that Salman being a feminist I you know you don't get it like now the munna is but now you know this is the world we live in the munna is forcefully have to be but now right equal rights hashtag i see i see <laughs> i have now learned something thank you yeah. Yeah. i don't know what it is man like i have this connect with salman i get him like i get the intentions <laughs> all the time and i wish i didn't have this connect but i do and it's 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 insane i and like you sujoy i am i cannot like like the salman khan magic just envelops me and i absorb it all and i love it and i have no defense against it at all it's, it just works <laughs> you know in in fan Gaurav says like connection bina kamal ki cheez hai yeah exactly <laughs> that's you yeah that's, that's, that's you with me. salman that's me like i know <laughs> If anybody else was doing that belt dance I would say you look like a rapist but because it's Salman Khan <laughs> doing it I'm like Sallu that looks awesome yaar I want to do that <laughs> uh, oh my god <laughs> but I got to um, say I, it least, do, yeah go ahead no at least you know yourself I I know I know <laughs> I know I'm I'm open about it like I, but I I have to say what uh, I agree with Stacy that I it, this does make me miss the first soundtrack of the bang 
um and i was yeah. just listening to chori ki are it is such a sweet yeah. song right like it's such like like yeah it used to like things used to I mean, work then and now it looks so forced yes i mean at some point we have to talk about that first the bang movie like on the podcast because it honestly is a good film yeah, mm-hmm. it is or at least i remember it as being like a really good film so yeah. we have to talk about it at some yeah. point L- let's do a the bang special when we talk about the bang 3 um and uh, let's move on now to our main review oh i i think next episode just quickly we're going to be doing like the best of the decade of the khans right that's what we're doing guys oh no we're going to be doing the bang if i maybe that or maybe we can combine it or something we'll we'll try to i i think with scheduling it might be tough but i think <laughs> Okay, welcome back next week for our four hour episode. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna unleash me on all three the bangs and get. But we're gonna now. But the point I was gonna make, like, we will be talking about that, like the best of the decade of the Khans. If it's not the next one, it's the one after. Um. So yeah, <laughs> let people let let us know. Like, I I would love to get some audio clips from people. Um, talking about which. out of the last 10 years which khan movie they fo- found was maybe the worst one and maybe the best one um i think that could be a cool uh, cool um, uh, episode for a forthcoming episode um yeah let's move on to rabne bana di jodi punjab power lighting up your life sundar sani this side ji hale 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 kal maine use pehli baar dekha tha aur use dekhte hi love ho gaya came out in the year uh, that gajni came out singhis khan is came out jodh akbar came out it was the second top grossing movie um and that's also the year actually drona and karz and my favorite tashan came out so 2008 was a very important cinematic year um <laughs> Um Shahrukh Khan was just coming off of Om Shanti Om and Chak De success so he was kind of riding on a high and Salman was making hello at the moment so it was not a good time for Salman at the moment <laughs> um I uh, I know it's also obviously the movie that gave us the magic the angel on earth that is Anushka Sharma um which is fun because I went back to interviews and I read some of the reviews she got for her performances it's it's quite hilarious Uh, to see oh. where Anushka was at the start and where she is now, I don't think anybody <laughs> saw it coming. I don't think anybody saw it coming. Um, mm-hmm. I I think th- this is a weird movie because I asked people about it, like, what do you feel about um, the Rab Ne Banadi Jodi? Um, and this movie elicits a lot of anger from people. It seems either they're very angry with Shah Rukh. or with the character that Shahrukh is playing either of Suri um being a liar or um Raj being uh just a cheapo but then there's also a lot of people that are very angry at Anushka's character because she's kind of um she just kind of goes along with this wedding that her dad has forced on her and I think I want to kick off with the the one thing that kept coming back um is suri a creep so amrita i'm going to i think i'm going to throw this one to you first what do you think is suri that because this is the tw- twitter reply i got the most that suri is a creep do you think suri is a creep uh suri in total or like suri as raj or like suri as suri like how i think suri i think suri as a whole i think people are saying like i got all different hmm. variations of it that because i do think it leans into this incel idea that suri has yeah. before even the term mm. existed of mm. incel i think suri is definitely yeah. an incel and he's definitely also one of those yeah. la- nice guys finish last kind of portrayals right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think he's uh, he yeah he definitely is an incel but i don't think he has the entitlement of an incel like he's um like he would never say nice guys finish last you know like that's who he is and he's he's i think what the problem with suri as a character is that he is a elite bombayites idea of what a middle class man in punjab looks like mm 
that is the fundamental problem of Suri because uh, the things that Suri says, the things that he does, um, and Shah Rukh like tries to humanize that character because that's what Shah Rukh does with all his characters. Right. Um, and he does it well. But the thing is, the fundamental problem with that film is that it's written by Aditya Chopra. So um, the things that Suri says, for example, you know, like um, where he says, like, you know, like, I don't need love. Like, I like she just unhone meri izzat rakli, like that is all that I need and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, like you can be from a small town. You can be I think if you watch TikTok on like Indian TikTok. Like, if you watch that, you can understand that you can be from, like, a small town. You can have, like, very little education. You can, like, at least Suri was, like, a graduate. He's supposed to be, like, a brilliant student or something. But there, you can get, like, a decent idea of what um, the interior lives of people from different classes look like if you follow something as simple as TikTok, which didn't exist back in 2008. So I think, uh, and I don't know if Aditya Chopra would have used that as a research anyway. So mm-hmm. maybe my my point is completely moot. But I think there's a certain level of um, condescension in the way that Suri mm-hmm. is imagined as a character and mm-hmm. is, you know, uh, is introduced to the audience. Um I it's think, like uh, he's checking off some checklist of yeah. how he thinks, you know, a, 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 a rural yeah. guy would act and react to all yeah. these situations. Yeah. It's very, uh, it's a very simplified view rather than, you know, uh, Shah Rukh is playing all the layers and trying to humanize it in as best as he can. But the lines that, lines that are written for him are all very oversimplified, broad lines. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what comes off as like, you know, makes it easy to say that Suri is a creep because uh, he's written to be a creep. And the reason why, like the few of us that don't think he's a creep, we think he's not a creep because it's mitigated by Shah Rukh, who can do like extremely creepy things in a way that makes you think, well, maybe it's not that creepy. But that's because you don't think Shah Rukh is creepy, you know? Yeah, Yeah, it, it kind of brought me memories of watching Mrs. Doubtfire, which is... You know, the main character played by Robin Williams is also a lying guy who is lying to his ex-wife and to his kids and all of that. But at the end, we are totally rooting for him. And that's the I'm not saying that Shah Rukh is as good as Robin Williams here. But uh, yeah, we totally buy into it just because it's Shah Rukh. Definitely. Yeah. So what do you think, Stacey? Creep or not creep? I Not creep, but I think... The thing that bothers me is that it, ne- it never shows that he's both. He is Raj and he is Suri, you know, and that never comes across. But it has to because he plays both characters. Inside himself, he must have some Raj tendencies because he can play it so well. And he never allows himself to let that out because he doesn't. Why does it have to be that way? But he must have that as part of him, you know, um, not the ridiculousness of it. But some of the things he said, he really meant as Suri and as Raj, but I don't think he's a creep at all. I never even would have gotten that impression. Um, but I was watching an interview with Shah Rukh, and he actually called Suri a psychopath, <laughs> which I thought, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was very. I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> but he's incredibly, he's incredibly manipulative. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like, I see Shah Rukh's point. Yeah, when I when he said that, I was like, oh, well, wait a minute, okay. <laughs> but I would have never thought of that, you know, if, if he hadn't said it that way. But you guys are completely right that he humanizes every aspect of him just in, in the way he plays the character. But there could have been more given to him, I think, um, so, I, as the character of Suri. So I think, the in a way, the problem with Rabne Banandi Jodi is that it takes a lot of... You, you have to accept a lot of conceits in this movie to enjoy this movie, Right. Um, I mean, mm. the, the the movie is centered around these core ideas that you can pick out that, you know, this is a love story of an ordinary guy. You know, uh, God or Rub makes your love stories. Um, you know, mm-hmm. com- com- familial and societal commitments are more important than personal desires. So these are kind of like core ideas. But then there's also the conceits where, you know, um, uh, the marriage itself, right? Like you have to accept that... Um, 
because the dad said or exposition uncle who's in there for like three minutes he you know just gives exposition and dies and by the way when he's on his deathbed he looks quite healthy to be honest he's like articulating <laughs> well which i find very very odd but so he forces you know suri who he's not seen in like 20 years or whatever to marry his daughter because his his uh her um the man she loves has basically died with his entire family in a car crash, which never is re- revisited again in the entire movie. Like, we don't even talk about, you know, she keeps saying that, you know, I haven't, I've, I've lost all the love I felt, but it ne- it's never really explored in the, in the movie itself. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, we have to accept that they would actually marry, not just promise the dad we're going to get married and then just, you know, not get married. We have to uh, agree that this woman who's, very uh, ambitious, smart, jovial, will give all of that up to just be a housewife. Um, and then we also have to agree that um, she cannot see that Raj is Suri, right? So right. these are the things we have to accept to enjoy the movie. And I think it that, that can be hard for a lot of people. So a lot of people were kind of getting back mad at, you know, um, Tani is why can't she see it's just basically Suri but then a few people were also see, saying why can she not see the goodness in Suri um, mm-hmm. why does she go along with this wedding why is she being kind of a passive anchor to Suri who just wants to be loved but then there were other si- side like why is you know why is Suri such a big liar why does he lie to make her fall in love with her the problem I had was that this this conceit that they've created about Raj and Suri being separate turns into this weird purity test for Tani, which that I yeah. had a real mm-hmm. trouble with. And like, what is this challenge that he's trying to put in front of her that you have to... It was almost like an alt-right circular thinking that if she cannot see the heart of Raj... If she's fallen in love with the heart of Raj, why can she not see the same heart in Suri? And I was like, this is insane thinking. This is the thinking of a psychopath, like Shahrukh is saying. (laughs) This is an insane, like, statement to take that you cannot even argue with. Um, And the other thing is also, I think, what they portray is that he, Suri, however, like, they do show him as doing, like, this is a thing for Shahrukh, right? He does, he does girly things in a way like that's always been Shah Rukh's thing in a way uh, or at least how Aditya portrays him is that he's doing things that otherwise women would do for example he does the arti when uh, you know um, ah. uh, Tani comes into the house um, He he's washing the dishes you know he's making her food and I think in that idea that Adi has these are the things that women should be doing but Shah Rukh is doing them because he's such a progressive, but he's also very much surrounded by very patriarchal old school ideas. Like I was really creeped out by the way his colleagues absolutely wanted to see Bhabi. It's like what is like you don't only want to be seeing Bhabi, but you also want to be served by her. Like I just found that mm-hmm. like super creepy the way they were like bring her out. I want to see her. I was like, what are you like? What are you doing? Like, I, I don't know if that was the flavor that they were trying. Like, this is how Punjabis are. What you are saying, Amrita. Or it was just like this inherent creepiness. Of like, Bobby ko like what, is, what is going on? Uh, I just want, like, I just have one quibble with what you said, which yes. is that I don't think this movie is trying, or Aditi Chopra is trying to portray Suri as a, uh, progressive as yeah. such. I think like he's basically trying to show that Suri is a beta. Like that's the whole vibe, you right. know. Although I would say to like, if there's like any women out there who are listening to this podcast, if you find a man who's gainfully employed, has his own house, is an orphan, and knows how how to do his dishes and cook, that's the man you should marry. <laughs> 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 that's amazing <laughs> like, uh, like yeah but uh, no I don't think I don't think the movie is like trying to say that this is like an ideal partner for Tani I think they're just saying that you know like he like lives this sad little life and then Tani is out of his league and uh, like he knows that and Tani also knows that and blah 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 
Well, one thing I find interesting is that he never shows her as Suri mm. that he loves her. Yeah. All he does is, ever, is he uh-huh. stares at her. He stares at her and he stares at her and he talks to her a little bit, but you never see him show any emotion towards her. And so how can she ever fall in love with him? Which is one thing that really got to me. I mean, I love the movie, but that was like, there was no expression. The small that's, thing. Yeah, yeah, that's also the thing that Shah Rukh once said, you know, he said that he felt, he felt that the, the, the point where they went wrong in this movie is the fact that they didn't, uh, they spent so much time because they were really worried about Raj and like how Raj would show on screen Mm -hmm. that they forgot to, uh, and they thought like Suri was the quiet character. So he didn't deserve, like he didn't merit that much thought and they thought that they could wing it. And Mm -hmm. so they forgot to like flesh out Suri, which Mm -hmm. is what you are talking about as well, Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I think they gave the uh, Hole Hole Ho Jaiga Pyar, that song to Suri, and they thought that was enough to convey that, you know, Suri is expressing his love in some way. And the only uh, other chance that Suri gets is to fight a sumo wrestler. (laughs) (laughs) You know, (laughs) that's his arc (laughs) from Hole Hole Ho Jaiga Pyar when he's fantasizing his one sided love to fighting a sumo wrestler in a way. (laughs) Which is which is very TikTok when you think about it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah like there's no there's no conversation between uh suri yeah. and tani as stacy says you know yeah. like um there's no like she doesn't know anything about him other than the fact that he's kind and that he stepped up in a time of like great need for her and her family but right and that and her dad liked him like that's basically all she knows about him Right. I mean, she also seems very like beholden to like the the like in a way that you know he saved her or she had nowhere to go. You know, yeah. I and I don't I don't that part also I don't feel is sketched out. Like I don't understand why. Like uh, like I I I've said this before. Like I hate like small time movies, and I don't know how big is Amritsar. Like, is it like? Delhi uh, how is it like a bigger city or like I can't understand like women were working right women were like had lives in 2008 like she seemed like a very smart confident <laughs> girl that could you know do a golgappa channel she could just eat golgappas <laughs> and earn money on that or you know like um uh like she rides motorcycles so she could become like a stunt woman so there's there's avenues for her so I was like why was she like, you know, like, uh, just... And like, like Amritsar has Shamak Dawar's dance camp, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a rural town. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't... That part I also didn't understand why she's so beholden and even why she went ahead with this marriage, even though she was like... And I, yeah, I think that o- that is also something in the movie that's not sketched out enough. Um, and I think mm-hmm. it kind of hurts Anushka as a... As a as a performer, because it, the, it's just not written there, right? Um, yeah. Let's let's talk about Anushka as a as a like this her debut role, um, because so I I kind of like I said I I went back and let me read a few of the comments that were written about her. So, uh, debutant Anushka lacks all chutzpa and can barely hold your attention. Oh, debutante Anushka Sharma is assured and upright. Upright? What is upright? But you wouldn't kill to eat pani puris with her the way Suri Kamraj does. This is this is like in major publications, right? This is like midday and Mumbai Mirror kind of reviews. And this um, Anushka does well, but this is an out and out SRK film which negates her role significantly. She has a nice smile and clearly looks Punjabi enough. And this advocate in a wholesome television actress sort of way. So this is the kind of reviews Anushka got for her first role. And there was a fear, I think, for the first three, four movies that Anushka Sharma did that she would be typecast this kind of a bubbly Punjabi version of Kajal or something like that. Um, and I think it's it's pretty amazing that she's gotten, you know, like she actively broke down that mold and, you know, the kind of movie she's making and 
you know, producing and she's like an entrepreneur and a business person. Like, I think she was even on the Forbes, Forbes most richest list or something like that. So she's come a far, she's come far from where she started out, right? Like, how, do, how did you guys, Stacey, what did you think of Anushka, knowing Anushka now, revisiting this movie and seeing where she started from? Well, I remember thinking when I first saw this that she's going to be someone, someone, someday. And I remember distinctly thinking that because there's moments that she has some really good scenes. So I think she's going to be, did I think she'd be where she is today? No. But I loved her in this movie. I thought she was very good, um, especially with the character that she had to work with. Um, so, but I do distinctly remember thinking she's going to be someone someday, especially with this being her debut film. I think my favorite bit about that whole thing is something that Anushka said, which is that before she got this movie, um, she had like a pretty high opinion of herself. Mm. And that she would look at like Aishwarya Rai and be like, oh, what's a big deal? Like even I can oh. look like that. <laughs> and then she did the audition for Aditya Chopra. And here's like, you know, my problems with Aditya Chopra in a nutshell. Um, <laughs> I honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly think that man lives to like, you know, like fuck with like the self esteem of women. Like that's all he tries to do. Um, Hashtag he, negging. <laughs> yeah, basically that is his producing style. He just like tries to make women feel bad about themselves. Um, but he basically told Anushka that she was. Um, you know, like completely ordinary looking and like oh. not that great looking. And like, she looked like an ordinary person. And Anushka was like, huh? What do you mean? <laughs> I look like I should have <laughs> And he was just like, yeah, no, you're not that special. And then apparently like on the first day on the set, like, you know, she saw her rushes and she was like, oh, is that what I look like? And like, I think that really messed with her head. And that's what led her down that path where like she got like, you know, the lip injections and mm. like, you know, she's like, she's, I, I like to think that she's recovered enough of her self-esteem where she's, you know, uh, she has, she can understand how beautiful she is because mm. she's stunning, like absolutely yes. stunning. Mm, yeah. She is. Um, and she's beautiful in this film as well. Like, you know, the way she's been shot and the way she looks. I mean, it's very clear that this is a first film, but she mm -hmm. still gives like, you know, she looks beautiful and she gives a good performance. But I think like, yeah, that's the Aditya Chopra USP at work, you know, like he's the one that got Bebo to do a size zero thing where she looked like a bobblehead doll. Um, I think she tri he tried it with um, with Kajol, except Kajol was just like, fuck off, I'm Kajol. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, you Brian you know. <laughs> if you've ever seen like the behind the scenes videos of uh, um, DDLJ you know it's just <laughs> him trying to tell Kajol to do things and Kajol being like no <laughs> <laughs> I will not um, but it yeah like I, uh, I think for a debut this is a very solid debut like mm -hmm. Stacy says like you know I saw her in this and I was like, yeah, like this girl has a future. Like she can act. Um, yeah. And if you think good. about some of the debuts that we've seen in the past yeah. few years, you know, and you think about that, it's really quite a big difference. You can see how she had a long way to go, but still she was going to be someone. You could tell she had that thing, that it. I, I think like uh, cumulatively, when I see this and Ban Baja Bharat was when I realized that she's going to be like some like the, the actress of of this decade or whatever, this generation. Mm -hmm. And uh, like retrospectively, when you see her in Dance Pe Chance, that that's that's the song <laughs> for her. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. But like, uh, I think the casting choice uh, in one of the making videos, they were talking about the casting choice for Tani Partner, and and uh, um, I think Yash Chopra was talking about, which is interesting because you know in all the Yashraj making videos, there is nowhere where Aditya Chopra features even from the back. True, <laughs> I never crazy. thought of that. <laughs> and then, um, so he was talking about why they had to choose a new face and 
the, the, the conscious choice was made so that, you know, when uh, Suri says, Ki tani mein mujhe rab dikta hai, and she has to look this ethereal new beauty and uh, Suri's point of view has to be made believable. And I think Anushka sells that completely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I think maybe one of the things that hurt her that was uh, so this came out in two thousand and eight, and in two thousand and seven, Om Shanti Om came out, and Deepika was the one that got launched, and you know, Deepika is being like a robot of perfection, right? Like, so it's it's kind of hard to maybe maybe there was some kind of you know, okay, wow, we had Deepika and. Maybe Anushka is not, you know, strikingly stunning as as uh, Deepika is. Maybe that was something that hurt her. Um, I do think things change for her because you can see that she's still raw. Like she has, uh, like a, a few times, like her her voice levels are a bit too high, or her speed of talking is too high, or her lip syncing is not on point yet. Uh, <laughs> especially in Chance Pe Dance, which I know, uh, Stacy, you have lots to talk about later on. Um, <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, I heard the grumble when uh, when Sujoy was praising it. Um, uh, so, uh, but uh, yeah, even when she's doing the lip syncing in Chance Pre Dance, well, even when she's doing the lip syncing in Chance Pre Dance, she it, she doesn't have it yet. But uh, I do li- I, I do like how she's like you know fully engaged and wants to do such a good job in this movie. Um, I do also like that Tani is like the loudest counter in the world. Like when she's counting her dance steps, you can hear it like through the whole mahalla. Um, so that that part I really thought was really sweet. <laughs> but but here, here I want to point out, I watched the making video of Hole Hole and, uh, you know, Vaibhavi Merchant is counting in the background. Yes. When yes. All of them are doing the dupatta roles. <laughs> it's really so funny. And it's just, yeah, it, it syncs well with what Tani partner is doing in the movie. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> very much so. So let, let's talk a bit about the movie because I feel uh, sorry the music because I feel this movie really comes alive with the the songs. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Hole Hole is just so sweet, right? Like it's Shah Rukh, he's singing to us as the audience, right? Uh, and it's the Gee. way it's shot; it's following him in this in the in these little streets, um, and it's pure magic of. Shah Rukh Khan because you know he's, he has the fake mustache he has the dodgy sneakers the you know the bad haircut but that mix of you know dream sequence with what's happening in reality it's just so Bollywood and it's yes. it, it just exemplifies everything it's, it's, I love yeah, it's in Bollywood pure Bollywood magic yeah, yeah. Um, I agree I miss that I, yeah. <laughs> I miss that where, where is that Bollywood magic now yeah um <laughs> and and it's like even when people were saying you know Suri is a creep or Suri Suri is you know he's li- he's a liar I'm like at least he's not threatening women with a knife to sleep with him right <laughs> which we are in 2019 so it's like I I kind of feel okay going back to Suri it, it's not that bad anymore. <laughs> Agree. Yes, I want. I want that. I want Suri. I want Shahrukh Khan with those eyes, you know, smiling at me, singing. Oh, you know, that's what I want. <laughs> those eyes, man. Those eyes. It's it's insane. <gasps> yeah. Um, I also like yeah. how Holly Holly also advances the story a little bit while it's doing the Holly Holly. Um, you mm-hmm. know that he figures out that she likes going to the movie and she likes dancing. So it's all of those little points. But I absolutely mm. love that little Holy sequence. Where he yeah. he comes with the thali, he puts a little mark on her. She yes. walks away, comes back, and like he goes over his cheek, and then all the dancers come in. It's yes. so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Ah, I love yeah. it. I love it. Um, so so th- there are two things that I want to mention here, and that is the whole of uh, apart from the golden temple scenes. All of the Amritsar sequences are all made in Film City in Bombay. Mm. So they, they have created this whole and the whole city within their studio environment. And it's amazing what they've done. And the, this Hole Hole song is shot in three long shots. And oh. it's it's amazing. Wow, it's I didn't like, know that. It's unpre- like uh, we don't get to see that level of 
craftsmanship you know come into life anymore we mm-hmm. we all are about you know jump cuts and club nights and bacha rapping and all of that and we don't get to see it anymore it's amazing yeah. this like uh, this movie is yeah it, there, there's a lot of heart and soul in the making of this movie yeah uh, yeah yeah and I, I think the the song itself is still really really good like the whole the, yeah. i like the soundtrack of this movie and this is like one mm-hmm. of the like better songs out of it i just thought it's very very sweet um the second one is hame rahi pyar ke which can i just say <laughs> can i just say this line i don't know which genius or he thought he was a genius that came up with hame rahi pyar ke phir milenge chalte chalte but uh, how this s- line evolves in the movie it's just a joke at the start it becomes a song in the middle and at the intermission points it's like the saddest line ever because he's saying it drunk to a mannequin will with teary eyes in a monologue you know it's like phir milenge chalte chalte it's like what is this like why is this such an important line and then like like then the song itself i this is the song i li- i don't like it that much um, because i feel Farah Khan did it better in Om Shanti yes. Om and even yes. Salman Khan did it better in Patthar Ke Phool. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> kabhi to chaliya lagta hai. So, I don't know. I think this is kind of the weakest out of all of them but putting Kajol and Shah Rukh together uh, is just magic. magic, right? Like, we had not seen Kajol on screen for a long, long time. Um, I think... after 7 years um, wow. and she wasn't even acting at that moment right so getting in her, her in for you know that little sequence and it almost feels unfair to anushka because they're putting all of these women that sharukh has j- such great chemistry and history with right so you have uh-huh. rani you have preeti you have the thing and then immediately it cuts off to anushka clapping in the theater because she was dreaming this thing and it's just like almost a shock to you as a viewer like oh oh i miss i miss him with preeti i miss him with with kajol <laughs> you know not that you know you know my feelings about anushka but um <laughs> abrita how did you like that song um i have to be honest like it wasn't my favorite like i yeah. like the the concept of it um and like you said like you know the chemistry is really great but the song itself is kind of hum yeah mm. it also has a very shamak davar kind of like energy right yes i'm not sure if he korea it's, it's very 1 2 3 4 kind of <laughs> like you don't see raj kapoor and nargis dancing to 1 2 3 4 <laughs> <laughs> no no you're right you don't <laughs> What did you think of the choreography Stacy? I know you're a, you're a dancer too, right? You you were a dancer, yes. right? Yeah, or you still are? Yes, I was. Um no, I was a professional ballet dancer for oh, a long God, time. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Much more serious than I thought. <laughs> What did you think about it? Um I liked it. It just it seemed to be missing something. The chemistry was there, but the choreography just seemed and even if you know those movies and know those actors and actresses it just did not seem to work as well as it should have like the om shanti om one was better i think mm-hmm. um but it was still you know it's still magic so i still loved it and it was still dancing so i still loved it but i think it could have been done differently somehow and i haven't been able to think why exactly it just seemed like something was off in the way they presented each of the couples in the songs Yeah it's it's just like when you have a really um parallel comparison between what Shahrukh and Deepika did in Om Shanti Om yes. and Deepika uh, and Shahrukh and Lara does uh, uh, Shami Kapoor and Helen in this in in this song it's completely like night and day yes uh, you know um and it's so yeah. close to each other and uh, dhoom tana has so much imagination and special effects yeah. whereas this just has shamak davar's choreography which i honestly have never been a fan of it's never really worked mm. for me um i always think of in bunty bubbly uh, remember naj bali uh-huh. yes <laughs> that is like for me the ultimate Shah- shamak davar song where they suddenly they first of all they're very 
weirdly dressed like it's ill fitting <laughs> like abhishek has never been a six pack guy and neither is rani and they put them in these like shiny stretchy uh, clothes <laughs> and then they have them dance with them. Yeah, in the way, and then they have them dancing with ribbons, like really large ribbons. Nachhe balli hai. It's oh uh, my god, my does... niece used to dance to that. <laughs> yeah, did she have the ribbon though? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what she liked. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, if she hears this, she's gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Like I remember, like like if you ever have a shoulder injury, so uh, uh, shoulder injury, you need to go to <laughs> you need to go to the physiotherapist, and they give you these elastic bands. As like yeah. Shamak Dawa just gave everybody those, and like na jubali hai, go ahead, dance on that. <laughs> um, yeah, which also which also you know highlights the point that how Sharuk and Anushka are dancing. They are Amrit Sir's number one dancing jury. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I I I I freaking love dance by chance though. Like like yeah, Shahrukh this... has no sort of sharam in this song. Okay, so this he is between you and Stacy now. Stacy, unleash <laughs> the wrath. Unleash dark Stacy. You hate. Oh my... like, so stay, just to tell song. you, Stacy has been texting me how much she hates dance pre dance. And the thing is, initially, because I've not seen the movie in a while, I thought you were talking about the Shahid Kapoor movie. And I thought, yeah, yeah that's a terrible movie. I hate that movie too. So I didn't react on it. And then when I was watching, I was like, oh, it's just even this song. So why do you hate this song that much? <laughs> Um, I said I when I texted them. I said so. Joy is going to be mad at me, but because um, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, go on, go on. Okay. Uh, it's just well, for once, the lyrics uh, yeah. drive me insane. They drive me insane. I mean, you know, put your hand up, put your hip, foot forward, put your foot back. I mean, what the hell? Just do the dance steps. <laughs> The, these lyrics and I, I I wrote this down. The lyrics are basically that scene with Martin Henderson and Ashwarya and Bride and Prejudice, where he's like yeah, pat the dog, pat screw the dog in the light bulb. Yeah, that's that's what it is, but in song form. The lyrics. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't they didn't need the lyrics. I mean, just show the dance steps because Shah Rukh's great, Anushka's great, except for some little things. But the the it's the music, the song, and the lyrics that that make me insane because. <laughs> Really, I, I, I want to. I'm screaming, aren't I? Um. <laughs> so, so in my notes, I have written "Hawa me art banana." So that, that's my line. Of the song. <laughs> <laughs> and and when Shahrukh is doing the the the, the waist move, uh, how he's making the eight in the air, it's it's uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I think this is the song that made Ranveer Singh go yoga karti hogi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's the thing like there's like a few songs in this film that are amazing and then there's like the rest of it which is like like it, I I don't have feelings as strong enough for me to like like tip over into hate yeah. like slightly. but also it's just like oh I I don't really care like this is just like dead air to me like I don't really care yeah but, like I have a feeling when the song was playing, you were already on your phone. <laughs> That's the kind of song it is for you, no? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've I've said this before. Like, I don't I don't care. Like, you know, I I know this sounds terrible, but there are times when I'll be watching uh, a movie, like an Indian movie, and the song will be playing, and I'll just fast forward through it. Like, mm. <laughs> like life's too short. Like, I can't I can't do it. I really like it. I, uh, yeah. I was dancing along with it. <laughs> I, was, I was making the hawa hawa me art. Yeah, my favorite is still uh, Tujh Mein Rab Dikhta Hai. That's 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 a, that's a good song for me. No, my favorite is Holly Holly. Yeah. I so for me like I I like the video of Holly Holly better, mm-hmm. but I like the song Tujh Mein Rab Dikhta Hai better. Right, right. Yeah. Today yeah. I am Switzerland. I am like <laughs> I am like so in the middle of every one of you. Like all of you will have like such strong opinions, and I'm like, Om Shanti. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know if I like this peaceful Amrita. I think we need to make you watch like a really old Salman Khan movie again. <laughs> uh, Nishche, like Veer Gatti or something. Yeah, Nishche Veer Gatti. <laughs> 
<laughs> we still haven't watched Garv. Like Garv yeah. is gonna come up soon. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, the Hollywood is also kind of it. Then the climax of the movie also starts, right? Like the the um, the. Like, it's all been fun and game. I do feel this movie is quite long. Like, I think it, it's 2 hours 40. And I think, you know, I mean, a movie shouldn't be as long as a Khandan podcast, right? The podcast should be longer. <laughs> right? That's how it should work. Uh, but uh, I do feel like we but get... But yeah, when, when, when Raj is, like, confessing his love for uh, for um, Tani and, and that whole hilltop sequence happens, and I thought, okay, the movie is starting to wrap up now. Yeah. And there's still, like, 40 plus minutes to go, <laughs> you know? Uh yeah. But then it's also that becomes like it, 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 that idea of the purity test becomes ha- starts happening here, which I really have mm. trouble with because he's like Suri is also saying, you know, she has to choose because Suri is her husband and Raj is a nobody. That's an actual line in the movie. And it's not true. Raj is her friend. Raj is the one that's making her laugh. La- Raj is the one that's engaging in her hobby, that's showing interest in her hobby. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that's making her forget about, you know, the the terrible past and the p- terrible 10 weeks she's had, lo- losing her father, moving to another country, losing the man she was about to marry and clearly loved. Um, and, you know, so Raj is not a nobody. But it, it, I, I think this is where the Aditya Chopra writing comes in that, you know, these the the bond of a husband or the commitment there is more important um then yeah. falling in love with this new guy that clearly brings you more happiness um but yeah it, it, it that that part I, I i didn't feel sit right with me and also this is the first point that tani ever says to raj that she's married um right before that she's never said that but i mean stacy how do you stand on that in a way i feel maybe that's not important like, is that something that you should be saying? Because they do make a point about the Rocky sequence, right? That you, a woman doesn't right. need to set the boundaries of you are my brother, I am married to be able to engage with a man in like a, like any, you know, a, a platonic relationship. So how do you, how right. do you, what do you think about that? Well, I, I think that she saw him as a bit ridiculous at first. And mm. then when they got, then they got to be friends and then all of a sudden she realized she was having feelings she thought she would better talk about her husband at that point. But in the beginning, I didn't see that there'd be necessary for her to say that she's married because she just saw him as somebody kind of ridiculous and annoying, in my opinion. Um, so I didn't see anything wrong with her not telling him because um, I don't think she was doing it to be deceitful. She just was kind of separating her life in some ways, you know trying to get through the day and enjoying her dance without thinking about Suri, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, Amrita, what did you, what do you, th- well, can I ask this? Because, I mean, I'm not Indian. Or, so, like, the Rakhi, can it be forced on somebody? Like, like these guys were crying when the Rakhi was being tied? So, that's a joke, right? That's like, actually, that's a, yeah, that's a joke. It's like, uh, joke you know, like the hot, <laughs> like, yeah. That's a South Bombay <laughs> <That's> joke. <laughs> yeah, joke tha. Yeah, like, I don't know. like jokes. Like and, and, the, and the names of the guys, uh, Dolly and Tiny. <laughs> Um, I did think like that, that sequence was like really funny, like, um, you know, like him, like swaggering into that room <laughs> and then suddenly like record scratch and like <laughs> everyone doing like bhaiya mere, like rakhi ki la rakhna and everything like that was really funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not meant to be serious. And also like rakhi is like one of those things like. It's weirdly like devalued in popular culture where, you know, like it's meant to be like a uh, like I've I've had like Rakhi brothers and it's like a proper like religious thing Mm -hmm. where you tie the Rakhi and everything and they take it seriously, you know, and then like in popular culture is usually like it's like this. It's like a punchline, you know, like you do like um uh, the hot girl in class will tie you a rakhi. You, it, it's like getting friend zoned, basically. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I think it, it, it had some interesting ideas around that. And I also think that the, the, when they're, you know, doing the shopping and then they have that scene in, like, which was very, it reminded me of Dilto Pagale where they're in separate uh, <laughs> changing rooms and having this conversation. Um, yeah, I think it, it, it's, it tries to make a few points, but it never really never really gets there um the other the other thing the point that they tries to make is that and there was there was a sadness in it that but again it, they didn't explore it enough i feel is that uh, uh suri would give him give erase all of suriness to become raj to be with her which i don't know it, there was something sad in that but then he he immediately said, oh, he, she should just find another Raj. And th- there would be like a kind of a tragedy where he has to marry her and uh, he, he, no, sorry, she elopes with Raj and now Suri is stuck in being Raj and he can never ever tell her that he's actually Suri. Uh, you know, that like almost like a source code kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know if you watched that movie, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that... Did you think he really was going to, I thought he was going to let her, you know, he wasn't, he would say he would elope, but then he wouldn't show up. Um, yeah. Was kind of, kind of how I saw it, that he would never, he couldn't be Raj, that he was going to let her go though. Let her, but he wouldn't go with her, I don't think. But which is even is, more shitty, right? Like create a fake yeah, persona and then exactly. dump her because I was hey, hey, joking, I wasn't that guy ever. Like that makes it kind of even worse. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. I do love... Oh, sorry, go ahead. As, no, I, I was just trying to uh, remember one of the scenes where uh, they're making Anushka, uh, you know, internalize her own thoughts and and trying to realize what she should be doing what's the right thing to do when she knows that raj loves her and but she's also married and they sh- show this whole sequence through her you know being in hyper wife mode and trying to clean and yes. do chores yeah. and the this whole techno music was playing <laughs> and i think it's set to the tune of dance by chance yeah <laughs> it's it's really weird yeah it's a weird choice yeah yeah I also really love that sequence where Tani tells Raj that she's not going to run away with him. Mm-hmm. And not because what Tani is saying, but what Shah Rukh is doing. Because he doesn't talk at all through that entire sequence. But he's just like emoting with his eyes, which we spoke about Shah Rukh's eyes, right? Like yes. he goes from teary-eyed to relief, pride, fear, happiness... All without any words. Like, the moment he realizes that she's actually picked Suri, there's like, the camera just freezes on him for like seven seconds or something like that. And he has all of, like, he has relief. He has, you know, fear that she was actually going to choose him. Then he has the happiness. And then also just kind of a pride that Tani chose Suri. And it's it's such a strong and good scene. And Shah Rukh is so good. It's insane. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, Shah Rukh is like, you know, it's, uh, he's just a really great scene partner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you can see that in, like, all his movies. Like, he's just really good. Like, we, uh, everyone always makes that joke, you know, like, Shah Rukh could romance a tree. But the reason <laughs> why Shah Rukh could romance a tree is because he'll pay attention <laughs> to the tree, you know? Yeah. Like, a lot, of, a lot of guys, like, you know, when they're doing, like, uh, romantic scenes and everything, you know, it's the focus is always on them. Whereas, like, Shahrukh has this way of like turning the audience's focus onto his partner and like what the partner is doing, and that's why he's like so good in those scenes. Like, he makes a full eye contact. Like, he looks like he's actually into this person. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like it's it's a good scene. And like, yeah, uh, I agree. It's a great scene, and he's yeah. good in it. Oh, I remember the first time I fell in love with Shah Rukh Khan was in DDLJ and they're in the train station and she says, you'll come to my wedding. And uh, he just looks at her and he, and he does that. Yeah. And you see the look uh, in his eyes, you know, that's when I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> you uh, know? And he he just through each movie, he does something like that where you can just feel everything just by a look in his eyes. You yeah. know? A fan and, was born. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> so, that's, that was, uh, I fell in love. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, my husband. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so basically, Shah Rukh will treat you like mahogany, even if you're a jhari, basically. Like, that's the magic of Shah Rukh. Um, <laughs> wow. I also love, like, the, like, in a way, like, when the reveal, the big reveal happens, that's, you know, so they're having the dance competition, because he actually never tells her that, you know, Sa- Suri was Raj. So he just right. shows up in, su- as Suri and starts dancing, and he knows the choreography, and like, light bulbs starts flashing in Tani's head, and she figures it out. I was thinking, you know, in a way, and this was my snarky Asim coming up. I was like, this is the worst time to tell this poor girl because <laughs> she just had some major tragedy. She's been really looking forward to this dance competition. She's been training for weeks. And now you're going to drop this emotional bomb on her. Um, and she's like not even engaged with the choreography. She's just dancing. She's not even smiling. She's like flashbacking the entirety of her last three months. Um, but then the, 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 the curtains close. And then Tani starts talking and, you know, she starts with, it was all lies. And then she goes, it was all lies that you don't know what love is. And my snarky heart just melted with the Bollywood <laughs> magic. And I was like, this is, this is stupid. This is stupid. But I'm also crying and getting choked up. <laughs> because it, it works so <laughs> <laughs> it's Bollywood magic. You cannot do anything about it. It just works. And you I forgot all all of my snarking and moaning about patriarchy and cinematic conceits because <laughs> Sharuk loves like Sharuk loves and uh, Tani got it at the end and then they went to Japan and they had a great time and Tani Ji was being uh, frisky with Suri <laughs> and that's what we all wanted, don't we? So, Su- Suri turned into a vlogger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And even just the voice he has and like it ends with this voiceover monologue and it's sweet and it's charming and it makes you laugh, it makes you sad and it's 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 Shahrukh, it's Bollywood, it's everything together and yeah, I can't be mad at this movie, man. I'm really happy we revisited it. <laughs> I was more like concerned with the admin choices that the dance uh, company has. Like uh, they don't give a shit if somebody else turns up at the dancing competition <laughs> at the right moment, and and like they are okay with name changes and everything. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the minutia of admin logistics. <laughs> yeah, like what the hell? <laughs> like, your name was Raj before, and now you're Suri. How the hell are you here? You know. But yeah, I I want to mention one last thing, and that was the cinematography of this movie is just insane, man. It's just amazing. Like I'm a big fan of the work of Ravi K. Chandran, like um, in Virasat, Yuva, Dil Chata Hai, and all of that, and. <laughs> In Rabne, he just uh, he he like the, the like the opening shots of Amritsar and and the the whole movie. It just has such great lights and and the way the, um, the scenes are portrayed, the composition and uh, yeah, I, hats off. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. They're like they're like paintings. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so pretty. And I want his house. Like, can I have his? Can I have <laughs> Suri's house, please? <laughs> Yeah, but it needs it, it needs like plumbing or like a proper shower because I can't do that tap. Oh no, no, that's like, okay. That that was fine. Seeing him sitting there, that was that was just fine. Yeah, the, the, it was fine because it was Sharuk. It was like a sixty-year-old uncle. You'd be like, uh, maybe get like a shower <laughs> if you have put a shower instead. You know, <laughs> like instead of going to Japan, maybe they should have put in like modern plumbing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amrita, any final thoughts on Rabne? Were you were you okay with rewatching this movie? Was it not too painful? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't too painful. No, <laughs> I um, there's a thing that Shah Rukh says about um, I you know it's funny like Shah Rukh, <laughs> like critiquing a Shah Rukh film is is often like. Um, it often leaves me at like a loss for words because all the smart things about his films are often said by Shah Rukh himself. So you're just like, well, yeah, I agree with Shah Rukh. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's basically all you can say. But there's this thing that Shah Rukh once said, you know, like the difference between Yash Chopra and Aditya Chopra is that Yash Chopra made movies for women, whereas um, Aditya Chopra makes movies for men. Interesting. And uh, he he said that you know like like 
Yash Chopra understood women and like he could really portray it didn't matter like how big the male star was like the and I'm paraphrasing here I forget like the exact words that Shah Rukh said but he said that you know like the women are front and center and their emotions and their interior lives whereas with Aditya Chopra it's about the men you know it's like their emotional journey um and that's basically what this film is like you know like Tani is an author backed role but she is not the focus of this film uh it's but the thing is like who is the focus of this film is it suri is it suri as raj is it suri as himself and raj like that's what you know there's a fundamental confusion at the heart of this film mm-hmm. um about who this film is about and that is what sort of drags it down and um keeps it from being a success in my opinion yeah it's about ramji i think that what the movie is about it's ramji <laughs> <laughs> so joy any final thoughts hi uh, this is my first rewatch of the movie um since really? its 2008 release wow. yeah I, I, i like i had a big issue with this movie when it came out because it just left me angry saying like oh, why does tani doesn't re- recognize her own husband and all of that all of those issues that we have talked about in this podcast but i think having dealt with that already this time it was more of an easy watch and i just gave into the bollywood cinematic magic of you know uh, anusha as we know her now and sharuk just pl- let them play and and the uh, beautiful visuals and the songs uh, like all of that came together as a really nice package for a really nice second watch for me i think that that's why rabne works as a second watch rather than a first one where you are totally on board with the issues of the movie and then you are like Ha, I'll entertain me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. True. Stacy was uh, rewatching the movie less painful than the appearance on Khandan itself. <laughs> <laughs> I actually enjoyed both and it was the first time I'd watched it since uh 2008 too. So oh, wow. uh, I yeah, so I had forgotten how much I liked it mm. and I just like Sujoy I just got lost in the magic and in Shahrukh and Anushka's performance and I didn't really think too much into it just cuz I was enjoying it so much so I loved it and I very much enjoyed being on Kandan thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was really fun and we need to do it again um I I I am uh, clearly you guys have not I've watched this movie like a ton of time like 20 bar dekhi at least like I really like it <laughs> um yeah. the way like i want to i i didn't want to make this talk about this because the way i watch this movie because it's not clearly the movie doesn't warrant this viewing that i have and adish chopra's writing doesn't justify it but the way i choose to watch it is that tani always knew that suri was raj and really? she just plays along with it um because she needs kind of like a break and stuff like that but the moment where uh things get real at that photo reveal there that's where she needs to start making the choice and i think it almost makes the movie more interesting because i do feel that you know what avrita was saying that there's a, a few disconnected disjointed ideas and too many cinematic conceits so with my reading you can kind of take away one of those i ideas right that people are saying you know how can she not see and why is you know the other idea is also that you know raj is annoying because he's an incels idea of what a cool guy is right so mm-hmm. yeah the, but he's kind of portraying what bobby his friend is right yeah who's oh, in his head yeah who's a terrible friend by the way he's not a good guy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but he's a very good actor in the movie yeah, i yeah, wanted to yeah. 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 oh yeah yeah oh, yes. vinay patak is great yeah oh my god yes so yeah i wanted mm-hmm. to kind of like as, as a kind of a rounder i want to ask people what do they think of my reading of this movie and maybe that's why i watched this movie much more yeah, than yeah you, you put a like a bareilly ki barfi twist to it <laughs> yeah, you know yeah exactly yeah bareilly ki barfi exactly um amritsar ka laddu bareilly ki barfi um <laughs> uh, so yeah um but yeah no i i really like this movie and i think a, a few uh, so joy what you're saying actually uh, our friend anisha and a few others mentioned that that it did leave them angry or even indifferent that okay they saw this and then they forgot about this movie but i do think mm. revisiting it now it really gives you that hit of bollywood magic it 
mm-hmm. shows you that Anushka Sharma is the Anushka we have now. And I think that shadow of Deepika and Om Shanti Om maybe didn't, you know, give her the proper uh, limelight that she deserves. And also having that Hamherahi Pyar Ke Chalte Chalte with these other actresses also didn't, wasn't really fair to her. Um, and it's also just like, you know, positive and nice, kind of a nice sentiment in a way, which, you know, we're, we're, we're dealing with a year of, you know, Kesri, Uri, Kabir Singh. Yes. Um, so it's just kind of a nice break. So I think, you know, people should maybe rewatch it and it'll just give them a good time for like two hours, three hours. And like Amrita, you can stay on your phone while Dan- Transpay <laughs> Dance is playing. So it should, it should go quickly. Or just fast forward. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's what Stacey does. So, yeah, <laughs> I think we can wrap it up. Stacy. where can people find you online? Um, I'm uh, at Bali Writer on Twitter. Um, and then it's BaliSpice.com is the website that I write for. And uh, then Instagram, it's Stacey Bali Writer 1111. Amazing. So, Joy? <laughs> I'm on Twitter and Instagram at 9E3K. Amrita? Uh, on Twitter at Amrita IQ. I'm at Asim Burney. You can follow us at Upodcast or the hashtag Khandan Podcast. Leave us a review on iTunes. Subscribe if you haven't. Tell your friends. Tell your family member. Tell your rickshaw wala. Tell your pan wala. Tell your laddu wala that listen to Khandan Podcast because it's pretty cool. Um, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll be back to our regular schedule. This was a longer break than usual because everybody was traveling. But uh, we'll be back uh, to uh, fill up your ears with our nonsense. So thanks for listening, guys. Hey. 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 Hey.